review of the Giant Revolt 2019 edition with a 105 group set. Had this bike for about six, seven months, put around 3k on it. And here's my honest review of it and why I'm getting right, rid of so it. So here it is, the Giant Revolt. It's the 2019 edition. Comes with a 4630 Praxis Works crank on the front. And I think it's a 34 on the back with 105 long cage derailleur, 105 front derailleur, and we have 105 brake and shifters. Ah, but what's this ugly thing? Well, this is referred to as the concept braking system. And what it does is it changes the shifter from cable to hydraulic. They say it's a way of uh, making the braking more easier, more of a feel. In truth, it's an absolute nightmare. You can't attach anything to the front of the bike. So your Wahoo or your Garmin, you have to try and connect here. If you're someone like me, you ride different times a year, you can't put a light on here. Any fixture interferes with the housing and also where the cable is changed to hydraulics in here. This whole area here is non-user friendly serviceable. You cannot service it yourself. You have to go back to uh, the shop where you bought it. And if like me, that shop is a little ways away, you gotta book it in, you gotta leave them, and often in the time, it's a very simple thing to do, but you cannot service it yourself. That's strike one for me. The other thing was it would constantly tighten itself loosen itself. This whole system here is horrific. These are built to be tightened and loosened, but the more you use it, it would actually turn just a barrel here on its own. Now that, if you can see it here, it doesn't connect or attach to anything. This isn't rubbing on here, but just through sheer use, this starts to tighten itself. So I had it on many a ride, I'd come back and I'd be going along and I'd start to feel the brakes tightening up on their own. So that for me is strike one. The brakes, uh, apart from that, they're Cannondale's own brand and not too bad, but single side pad movement. Now you're up into the realm of a $3,000 bike here in Canada. Um, the carbon frame is a nice frame. It is nice, the quality of it's nice, um, you can trust it, I haven't obviously dropped it, but it's, it's a nice solid feel to it, very stiff, big head tube, very stiff, solid down tube, very stiff. Now if you're someone who's going to start wanting to ride bigger hills and you're going to want to put a smaller crank on here, say you go to Thailand or any adventure riding and you want to start dropping this down to maybe an XT crank, that is just shy as low as it can go so you can't put a smaller crank on this unless you are a pretty good handy engineer and you can make an adjusting clamp to come further down the other thing is that's carbon so you can't put a band clamp around it and put a separate derailleur on it strike two my other big thing with this is the hubs like i say this is just under a three thousand dollar bike and the hubs that come with it are, uh, I would say, pretty much awful. They're Giant's own brand, they're not Shimano 105s. This one at the back, I can't even remember what they refer to it as, but the, the cassette, the way the cassette ratchets on when you apply pedal to the, they've redesigned that, they've done their own version of it, which involves springs, unserviceable by the home mechanic. No non-giant bike shops will touch it. Regular bike shops won't even touch it. This is what needs to be replaced. Completely unserviceable by the home mechanic. You can't get this off yourself without a very special tool that glides in here to unlock it off the free hub. This you have to go back to Giant 4. During this period, that broke, so the hub constantly would catch, so it would turn it into almost a single speed. Phone giant, giant don't get back to your phone calls. Email giant, giant don't respond to your emails. So get back to the shop. They can't get it in for another three, four weeks. Take it back to another dealership. Leave it with us. 
giant won't even contact them as a giant dealer. Bike manufacturer and you're ignoring your base of who buys your bikes, pretty in bad. But that's just been repaired. That's a $65 repair on a bike that's done about two, two and a half thousand kilometers of easy riding. Um, that for me was the biggest thing. Like that, that's just not on if you're selling bikes and you can't service parts of it yourself. And then when your customers are trying to contact you, you ignore them. Um, other things that are good is the, the bars. They flex, isoflex bars. So there's a small amount of flex in them. I'll be honest, I've yet to feel it. People do claim to it. I don't think it moves much, um, but a couple of mil. And it has the flex seat post as well. Again, I couldn't feel it, didn't see it. Um, other things of note, we were using this as an adventure touring gravel, gravel, gravel bike. bike. You can get a rack to fit it, but again, it's hidden luggage mounts behind here. It comes up and then there's a strange bar that will come around and attach here. So here there's a big bendy bar. Not sure how good that would. Everything else on the bike quite nice. Hidden brake routing, hidden cable routing. Um, for me, it did ride. For me, it did ride quite nicely. Um, but for me, I would never buy a giant bike again. I would not recommend this bike. I think as a manufacturer, ignoring shops when they're trying to get hold of things, utterly awful. And this thing with the brakes, this is useless absolutely useless it's clearly a way of getting rid of uh, cheaper components and marrying them to what would feel like a more expensive hydraulic disc um, in truth it just turns the whole situation into a completely unusable space so for those of you who are going to do gravel packing bike packing touring on it your space to put something is this so i run a wahoo the wahoo would sit here that's the whole space occupied because of the angle and where it's short frame geometry, where you would be sitting here, your head's over here, the angle that you would be looking down on ends up being like this, very unsafe, so completely useless. This is not enough space to fit the small Wahoo or Garmin um, adapter, and it would, it would conflict with all this silliness. You cannot fit the loop around the adjuster because again, it would adjust, it would conflict with the hydraulic hose, this is on both sides, and you cannot fix it here. There's nothing. On the new Trex, on the, they have separate attachments where you can fit the Bontrager light system underneath. Giant have done none of that. So this for me is a completely useless area. Um, anything else? I think that's about it. Oh yeah, the tires, they were Giant's own brand, try and cross cut. I think they were 43s or 45. I'll show you the wear on these in, I think say about 1800K, pretty much done, about a mil, maybe a mil and a half there, compared to the front. Okay. Uh, they were nice and grippy, but obviously on the roads, extremely slow and boring. I get that's not what it's for. Um, they were nice and grippy. They didn't heat up at all. No, not really. Obviously it's carbon fiber, so for me, nothing against their bikes, but I would be thinking if you were thinking about getting one, gravel bike, carbon fiber, if you're using it properly, you're gonna drop it, you're gonna have the odd crash or accident. If you are using it as a gravel adventure bike, which this is targeted towards, you can't clamp anything to this. You do that on a carbon bike, you'll crack it, game over. So it's Velcro straps. Um, what we did with this was just put some clear tape through it so you won't rub the frame. Um, I spoke to another couple of people who had stuff along here and on the underside of the top tube and they'd rub the paint off completely. So again, maybe not nothing against this bike, but something to bear in mind. Anyway, that's my honest review of the Giant Revolt 2019. I would not.